Realme, a popular technology brand which started five years ago as a sub-brand of tech giant Oppo, released their new mid-range phone. In today's video I'm going to show you everything you want to know about Realme 10, a low tire mid-range phone with fast processor, 90Hz AMOLED display and a 50 megapixel camera. I'll do several tests to see how good it actually is in terms of photo, gaming and overall performance. Hi, what's up guys? My name is Adam and you're watching Family Pop TV YouTube channel. Before we do any tests and comparisons, let's check what's inside of that yellow box. Straight away we are welcomed to Realme family and that's nice. We got here a quick guide and a bumper case, the phone itself, a standard 33 watt charger with a dedicated USB-C to USB-A cable. And here we got the Realme 10 unboxed. It's a good looking phone with a solid build and a secure enough grip. Its size and weight of only 179 grams are just right to be considered a pocket-friendly device. The 6.4 inches have lately become a middle ground on the market, pocketable, not too bulky and yet with reasonably sized screens. Realme 10 comes in two color options, Clash White and Rush Black, which is actually dark blue, grading towards black, sprinkled with glittering particles and that's the model we're testing today. The body of the phone is made out of plastic and has smooth texture which looks good but it's catching smudges. I like the overall design and build of the phone, however the only room for improvement is the ingress protection. A basic splash resistance rating would have given the users some peace of mind. At the top we got a speaker for the phone calls, at the right side volume up and down buttons and home button with the fingerprint scanner. The bottom edge has a mini jack socket for the headphones, a microphone, the USB socket for charging and plugging the OTG devices and a single speaker. The left edge has a SIM card and a micro SD card tray slot. The storage can be expanded up to 1TB using the micro SD cards which can be inserted into the dedicated slot which also contains dual slot for SIM card. At the back we got one 50 megapixels camera and a depth sensor. As in many other phones, the depth sensor only provides the distance information which helps the image signal processor to create the artificial creamy bouquet in the photos. The Realme 10 has a flat Gorilla Glass 5 protection on the top of its 6.4 inch Super AMOLED display which has a resolution of 2400 by 1080 and 90 hz refresh rate. That's sweet! The display has over 600 nits of brightness and has super fast 360Hz touch response rate. I'm sure gamers would appreciate this. As mentioned earlier, the Realme 10 has a 50 megapixel Samsung ISOCELL primary camera sensor with Tetracell filter and a 2 megapixel Omnivision monochrome sensor for depth mapping. Now let's check the camera's performance. And before we carry on, make sure you're subscribed. Here we got a few images with 50 megapixels resolution. The amount of details is, I would say, satisfactory, though I can tell the phone is processing every image to get the best out of that 50 megapixel sensor, even in low light conditions. The photos in default mode are taken in 12.5 megapixels resolution and also looking great. However, when it comes to zoom, it doesn't look great, especially when the magnification is at the maximum, so I would avoid digital zooming. Here's a little comparison, photo taken by Realme 10 at the left side against the same photo taken by Xiaomi 12T at the right side. Same photo taken by Realme 10 versus iPhone 8, certainly Realme does better job. The phone is capturing full HD 1080 pixels 30 and 60 FPS videos. Unfortunately, Realme 10 hasn't got electronic image stabilization, so the captured footage is wobbly. For the comparison, at the right side we got stabilized footage captured with the iPhone 12 mini. The difference is massive. The front selfie camera utilizes 16 megapixel sensor. The quality is good enough for a video call or to snap some quick selfie. Good contrast and vivid colors. I like it. 
The Realme 10 is powered with fast 6 nanometers MediaTek Helio G99 chipset, which features two high-performance ARM Cortex A76 processors clocking up to 2.2 GHz and highly capable ARM Mali G57 class GPU. The graphic processing unit is the real strength of the Helio G99 chipset. The Realme 10 is among the best scoring phones in its price range, nearly as powerful as the Realme 9 Pro. According to the Antutu.com, the Realme 10 gets the score on nearly 400K, which is slightly less than Realme 9 Pro and Samsung Galaxy A53, which is probably one of the best in its class. There's also 5G version of Realme 10 available. It has slightly better specifications and obviously offers the 5G connectivity, but hasn't got that super AMOLED display. The base storage version has 4GB of LPDDR4X RAM and 64GB of UFS 2.2 storage. RAM can be virtually expanded with the additional 4GB of designated flash storage space thanks to the UFS 2.2 specification. And for this reason, I would recommend the Realme 10 version with at least 128GB of storage space or consider getting Realme 10S or eventually wait for upcoming Realme 10 Pro Plus if it makes sense. Let's check some processing power hungry games. First, the Asphalt 9 Legends. The graphic details are set on high quality, the FPS rate on 50, however in a very busy moment there are noticeable frame drops, but still everything looks fantastic as for the budget phone. The next game, one of the most popular shooters, Call of Duty Mobile. The phone offers medium graphics, quality and 60 frames per second. And again the games run smooth, but occasionally the frame rate drops a bit. Another shooter, Shadowgun Legends. I have tested it on medium graphic level again and 60 frames per second. And the phone performs great. No noticeable frame drops, all goes smooth as a butter. I tried the ultra high graphic settings and the phone warned me straight away that this will cause overheat. And it did, however, the game ran fine but I had very visible lags, but I was still able to run through it and the graphics looked really good. Taste it. Now, one of the most popular mobile games, PUBG, which runs on medium graphics settings, but it's also very smooth. As you can see, the amount of details has been limited, but still looks good. And I had no issues with the lags or frame drops, all went smooth. Overall, the Realme 10 demonstrated outstanding stability during gaming. This means, even when running at peak performance for prolonged periods of time, the phone won't throttle and doesn't get hot. On the contrary, after an hour of intense gaming, it's barely got warm. Overall, the Realme 10 offers excellent performance and stability for its price bracket. And the last test, the game which is probably the most hungry for the processing power, the Genshin Impact. Unfortunately, Realme 10 isn't strong enough to run this game smoothly. In fact, the true FPS rate during the gameplay was often less than 30. With very annoying lags, the game was so choppy I was actually unable to play it. The phone runs on Android 12 with Realme's Android skin on the top. The software version is a generation behind the Android 13 seen in Pixel phones, but compared to other third-party Android phones, it's not far off. Animations are smooth and fluid, the user interface is customizable and everything that needs to work, works well. There is a 5000 mAh battery which performance is excellent and can power this thing all day of intense use easily. 
The included 33 watts fast charge tops up the phone as a reasonable rate, taking about 28 to 30 minutes to top up the phone from 0 to 100%. To extend the peak performance of the battery, I would recommend to stick to the golden rule, keep your battery topped up somewhere between 20% and 90% most of the time. Top it up when it drops below 20, but unplug it before it hits 100%. For this reason, you might want to reconsider leaving it plugged in overnight. Ultimately, at this price range, it's really hard to fault the Realme 10, which is like a mini computer with a good screen, good processor, and OK cameras and a great battery life. Things like the plastic body and lack of ultra-wide camera can be forgiven. We're still getting a good phone for everyday use, gaming, snapping photos and capturing videos, considering its low price. Okay guys, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed that video and found it pretty informative and useful. If you're new to the channel, make sure you're subscribed so you won't miss when the next video comes out.